okay today we will be starting this uh, topic called viscosity which basically comes under fluids essentially viscosity means fluid friction you can put it like that fluid friction or i can say friction between fluid layers or friction between fluid layers or it can also refer to friction between fluid and solid friction between fluid and solid generally the rule is friction between two solid surfaces we call it friction only between two solid surfaces friction between solid and fluid we call it as viscosity or viscous force particularly friction between solid and liquid we call it viscosity or friction between two liquid layers also we call it viscosity friction between solid and gas like air it is called drag so for example if i have a certain surface on which i placed a block and this block is moving so here the resistive force is called friction it is called friction on the other hand we can have a for example if liquid in which there is a sphere which is moving so the moving sphere will experience certain opposition by the liquid which we call as the viscous force it can also be between two fluid layers that's possible and if you have, so this is a liquid and if you have gas and if a sphere is going in gas and there is a opposing force we call that as drag force in general this viscous force the friction due to liquid the viscous force we shall see in more detail also is proportional to velocity of the object the object is moving with a greater velocity then the frictional force due to liquid which i call as viscous force will be more if the object is not moving it is having zero velocity this viscous force will be zero this is for liquids but uh, for gases it's a bit more tricky the viscous the drag force between a gas and a solid the drag force it is proportional to velocity of object at lower speeds and it is proportional to the speed square let us say i shouldn't say velocity square i i can say velocity square it's actually dot product of velocity with itself at higher speeds so we won't be dealing with drag force in our course unless you encounter it in a problem where he mentions it we won't be dealing with the drag force so here we will only be dealing with the force between two layers of fluid which is a viscous force or between a liquid and a solid object which also is a viscous force so that is the scope of this chapter so first we should understand how a special class of liquids called newtonian liquids behave and how the basic definition of coefficient of viscosity is introduced so two things i have to tell you here one we shall study viscosity we shall study viscosity for a special class of liquids special class of liquids 
called Newtonian liquid or you can say Newtonian fluid. What is a Newtonian fluid? We will see as we proceed down the line. It's not an easy thing to understand. But we shall look at what is a Newtonian fluid. So our study of this topic viscosity is only in the context of Newtonian fluids. So that is quite an important thing. And we shall introduce a new physical quantity called coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity and uh, I will use this symbol eta pronounced as eta to represent this coefficient of viscosity so these are our main agendas in this topic. Now let us try to understand what exactly is uh, this Newtonian fluid. What exactly is this Newtonian fluid? Let us try to understand. See suppose I take a river. This is the river which is flowing and this is the bottom most bed of the river the ground if you go deep into the river ultimately you will reach the bottom of the river or what I call as the bed of river which I am representing by putting lines like this. Now I can visualize this river to be made up of many layers. So I can have one layer of the river the top layer then the layer below it then the layer below it and so on and finally you have the bottom most layer of the river. Let us say depth of the river is L and let us say the top area the flat portion of the river the top cross section area within this region let us say the area is A. So. Uh, I am taking the area only from here to here and for uh, certain depth. So the top area of the river, I am calling it as A. Now suppose if I apply a force F like this on the top layer of the river. It could be me who is applying this force or there may be some pressure force by somebody you need not show it here to the right you can show it even here to the right so somebody is pushing the top layer let us say then what happens is the top layer starts moving due to this force so it is kind of accelerating this top layer is accelerating due to this force and the moment it starts moving there will be a frictional force acting on the top layer. So I call this top layer as 1, the next layer as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 like that. Let us say we went up to 10 layers suppose. So I divided this whole river which is flowing to the right let us say into 10 layers. And uh, right now there is a force F. To start with I can assume river is at rest and there is a force F on the top layer let us say. So the top layer which is 1 on which there is a force F it starts accelerating and the moment it starts moving the frictional force which we call as the viscous force will come into picture. So this viscous force starts acting I will call it as a small f. So to give you an example your applied force on layer 1 can be something like 10 newtons and uh, as this starts moving viscous force will come into picture. The point of viscous force is if the velocity of the layer is more then viscous force will be more. So initially this layer just started moving. 
So before it started moving, there was no viscous force. As it started moving, there will be some viscous force. So let us say the viscous force is 1 Newton. As its speed continues to increase, this viscous force is going to increase. So as speed of layer 1 with respect to layer 2 increases, it is always with respect to the below layer you are looking at the speed. There must be relative motion for viscous force to be there. So as speed of layer 1 with respect to layer 2 increases, viscous force increases. So initially the viscous force was 0. As this layer started moving the viscous force is 1 Newton then 2 Newton as its speed increases. As the viscous force increases net force is reducing but it is there net force is there so there is some net acceleration so speed will increase as the speed increases for this layer with respect to below layer viscous force will also increase from 1 2 3 4 5 one day it might reach 10 once it reaches 10 this layer 1 will be going with a constant velocity because net force is 0 and if velocity is constant, viscous force will also not change, it will continue to remain same, 10 only at that point. So once again, initially all layers were at rest, you applied a force on the top layer. To start with, the top layer's velocity was 0, so viscous force was 0. So 10 Newton was there, viscous force was let us say 0. The layer started accelerating, it started moving. The moment it starts moving, viscous force will come into picture, it will be 1 Newton now. So it is opposing the applied force but still net force is there to the right so this layer will accelerate to the right its speed will increase but the rate of increase of its speed is decreasing the speed with which speed increases is decreasing because ultimately the force viscous force is increasing in value anyway so as the speed increases, viscous force will become 2 Newton. Now the net force has reduced in value, but it is still there. So acceleration is still there. Speed will continue to increase, but not as fast as we were expecting. Then viscous force will become 3 Newton as the speed increases. So as the speed is increasing, viscous force is increasing and this happens. One day, of course, the viscous force will reach 10 Newton and then the speed will be constant for this layer. But let us continue our analysis a bit more deeper. So when this first layer started to move and there was a viscous force on the first layer, this viscous force is exerted on first layer by second layer. So if I take now the second layer, there will be a reaction of this viscous force in that direction, which will make the second layer also move now slowly. First layer is moving because of your applied force. Second layer is moving because of the reaction of the viscous force acting on first layer. Then the second layer also starts moving now. But you must understand on the first layer I applied 10 Newton force and the moment it started moving let us say viscous force is 1 Newton. The moment it started moving this is the first layer. On the second layer reaction of this viscous force is 1 Newton. Then as it starts to move with respect to third layer there will be a viscous force on it as it starts to move there will be a viscous force on it uh, that maybe i don't know maybe 0.5 newton something which is slightly less because its velocity is lesser compared to one once velocity the first layer's velocity is increasing faster because net force is more but the second layer's velocity is not increasing that fast because here right now the net force is relatively less. Why on first layer net force is more? Because you apply 10 Newton. That's the reason. But on the second layer you are not applying force. It is a reaction of viscous force. That depends on the relative velocity between these two layers. Then the reaction of this 0.5 will act on third layer. It will try to move the third layer but with a much lesser speed than first and second layers because this force is now even much less and so on. As time proceeds, as the speed of 1 will increase, 
already speed of 1 is more than 2 because its acceleration is more than 2 speed of 2 is more than 3 because its acceleration is more than 3 but there comes a stage where once speed is even more and this became 2 newton then the reaction this will become 2 this might increase to 1 newton let us say because its speed increased then this might increase to 1 newton and so on so these viscous forces are changing values depending on the relative speed between layers finally there will come a stage where the force on layer 1 what you applied is 10 newton and viscous force also ultimately reached 10 newton then this velocity is constant because net force is 0 reaction of this 10 acts on this 10 newton and uh, ultimately it will also come to a speed where this is also 10 newton ok so this continues and if we carefully look the first layer has achieved maximum speed because from the beginning its acceleration was quite huge the second layer achieved slightly less speed the third layer achieved even lesser speed and so on why because on the first layer the net force was quite huge to start with on the second layer net force is not that huge ok it, its velocity has been increasing slowly because uh, this force is increasing slowly this is also increasing slowly but here the difference is very huge so there comes a stage which is very difficult to visualize where the set of liquid layers which were like this to start with 1, 2, 3 and so on and the 10th layer which is at the bottom of the bed would have gone to this some location like this the bottom most layer is very interesting it would not have moved in most of the cases uh, it would be there only so the velocity of top layer was is more when it comes to this stage it's more velocity of next layer is lesser than top layer the reason is simple on top layer continuously a greater force acted in comparison to bottom layer the next layer so it gained more velocity so next layer's velocity is slightly less the next layer's velocity is even less is even less is even less and the bottom most layer's velocity is zero it was at rest from the beginning generally this is the case that happens if it is a Newtonian liquid so the top layer's velocity would be something like I am just giving some rough values maybe 15 meters per second the layer below it will be moving with 14 meter per second this is when steady state is reached what is meant by steady state when net force on all layers is zero when they achieve their own constant velocities this would achieve 13 meters per second and so on so on so on and finally the bottom most layer will be at rest so a question might occur to you why is the top layer's speed ultimately more you see the answer is this you started at t equal to 0 and steady state is reached at some time let us say t equal to 10 seconds in these 10 seconds the net force on top layer was more it was originally 10 minus 0 10 newton then as its speed picked up it became 10 minus 1 9 newton 8 newton 7 newton 6 newton continuously huge force was acting on top layer but on the bottom layer the net force was to start with only 1.5 2 or maybe initially 2 if this was 0 then 2 minus 0.5 that is 1.5 then when this became 3 this would have become 1 2 newton that way it was increasing so compared to first layer the net force on second layer is less net force on third layer is even less so in a given time obviously at 10 seconds the top layer would have got more speed because the net force on it was continuously more the layer below it would have achieved a slightly lesser speed because the net force on it was lesser in comparison to the top layer and so on all the way like that and the bottom most layer is very interesting generally the bottom most layer of liquid it is in contact with the stationary ground so it also tries to remain in contact with the stationary ground so if you see this 
from here to here till the speeds are getting stabilized it is called a transient state it is called a transient state okay once the speeds of all layers are stabilized after which they continue to go with same speed why because the net force on top layer is 10 and that speed will continue net force on the next layer is also 10 and whatever speed it achieved at that point it continues and so on so once the speeds are stabilized for all layers that is called steady state that situation is called steady state so we will most of the time focus on steady state even though transient state is also very important now what exactly happened to this set of liquid layers that i have taken what happened after i applied this force on the top layer which force the force f what happened to them it got deformed the set of layers got deformed there is a shear strain shear strain if you remember elasticity if i took a cubical block and suppose i applied a force on the top portion of the block it would deform it would go to this scenario of course this bottom i have fixed it let us say it would go to that scenario and the internal elastic forces will try to apply will try to oppose this external force and at some point this block would have achieved uh, an equilibrium value where the internal restoring force is countering the external force so there is a strain this angle theta is what we called as the shear strain and the shear stress was this force which was parallel to top surface by area that was what we called as shear stress and theta is our shear strain and in the case of solids the shear strain and shear stress are related in fact they are proportional shear stress is proportional to shear strain so first there would be a strain which results in a deformative forces which try to hold the object and uh, this was the case with solids and the proportionality constant was called modulus of rigidity okay but in the case of liquids this relation does not hold anymore the shear stress is not proportional to shear strain particularly for newtonian fluid rather rather now i will write it for newtonian fluid it is found that the shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain rate of shear strain means the speed with which shear strain is changing derivative of shear strain with respect to time so if the shearing is happening very fast then the shear stress will be more the viscous force will be more let us say we can put it that way the viscous force will be more on all the layers so if the layers are trying to shear away faster trying to move if one layer is trying to move with a greater speed with respect to below layer if it is trying to move with a greater speed then the viscous force will be more if it is trying to move with a greater speed the shear strain rate will be more so this is the definition of a newtonian fluid so for solids it is completely different ball game elastic solids shear stress proportional to shear strain but for a newtonian fluid the shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain and we can introduce a constant of proportionality so the shear stress acting on the fluid layers due to some external force applied parallel to the layers is a constant which is called coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity into rate of shear strain so let us try to understand this mathematically in more detail in the context of our diagram so these fluids are quite different from solids in solids the shear stress is proportional to shear strain proportionality constant is called modulus of rigidity but here in fluids the shear stress is not proportional to shear strain it is proportional to rate of shear strain or the speed with which shear strain is changing if shearing is happening very fast 
then shear stress will be more or you can say the uh, viscous force will be more we will come to that as I show you this diagram now let's look at this diagram once again we were taking the river the set of layers of the river I called this layer as 1 this layer as 2 and so on and this layer was 10 and we were applying certain force here F external force this force is applied parallel to the top area if I say top area is A so I can say shear stress is this force parallel to area by area and shear strain is basically all these layers would have moved to some level like that after some time so this angle theta is the shear strain so shear strain you can say is theta or we can also approximate it to tan theta which happens to be this distance x by the depth of the river L so it is x by L but for a Newtonian fluid shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain means derivative rate means d by dt of shear strain that is the definition of a Newtonian fluid so if somebody says what is a Newtonian fluid? A Newtonian fluid is one where the shear stress on the fluid layer is proportional to rate of shear strain. So these are a special class of fluids which we are discussing which follow this rule. So F by A is some constant which I call as coefficient of viscosity into D by DT of X by L. L is the depth of the river let us say dx by dt is velocity of the top layer and velocity of bottom layer is 0 so you can write velocity of top layer or you can even write v minus 0 by l so it is basically the velocity gradient what is the speed of top layer with respect to bottom layer the rate at which the top layer is moving with respect to bottom layer that relative velocity per unit length we call it as velocity gradient so that comes into picture in fact even a better relation would be f by a is eta instead of uh, writing v by l it would have been better to write dv by dl for example if i take these layers so the force f of course they have reached a steady state i am applying a force f there is a viscous force F here let us say okay it is in steady state so this force F or this force whichever what you are applying or what is the viscous force both are equal in steady state it is eta which is coefficient of viscosity we will come back to this into A the top area of this layer into dv by dl the velocity gradient between this layer and next layer okay uh, you can divide the layers into as small thickness as possible you can divide them into infinite number of layers if you want so how velocity is changing with respect to the layer below it and gradient of that velocity gradient means change in velocity by the depth so dv by dl that is a more precise definition more precise definition for a Newtonian fluid so instead of writing, writing f equal to eta a v by l can write from here f is eta a v by l instead of that I am writing f equal to eta a dv by dl which is more correct technically so this equation can be applied either in uh, transient state or in steady state also it doesn't matter in steady state the applied force if you take the top layer the applied force and viscous force both are given by this equation only in steady state Okay, but in transient state this would be the viscous force acting on the layer so the viscous force acting on the top layer your applied force may be 10 Newton the viscous force acting on the top layer depends on what is the velocity difference between this top and the next layer to the depth so dv by dl is giving you that so the viscous force acting here is given by eta which is coefficient of viscosity into area of any one of these layers all layers have got same velocity same area let us say 
into dv by dl that is the viscous force so this is giving me viscous force in steady state that will also be equal to applied force on the top layer let us say or it will be the uh, uh, viscous force of any layer in steady state generally what happens is layer 1 the layer below it 2 and if you take the layer below it 3 on 2 the viscous force due to 1 depends on the velocity gradient between 1 and 2 on 2 the viscous force due to 3 depends on the velocity gradient between 2 and 3 ok I just showed the directions in the other way on 2 the viscous force due to 1 will be like this on 2 the viscous force due to 3 will be like this in steady state both these are equal but if you go to transient state this viscous force on 2 due to 1 will depend on dv by dl between these two layers and the viscous force between 2 and 3 will depend on dv by dl the change difference in velocities by the depth between these two layers so this relation which I have written here you can use it for transient state or in steady state it doesn't matter it is a general relation and this eta which I called as coefficient of viscosity is a property of the fluid it depends on the fluid it depends on fluid if it is water which we assume to be Newtonian it has certain value if it is uh, some other oil or some other liquid it will have a different value for liquids which offer great resistance like oils which you use in bike the coefficient of viscosity is very high for some of these oils so if coefficient of viscosity is very high the viscous force will be more due to such a liquid you can see it from this relation itself this viscous force F will be more if this coefficient of viscosity is more okay so this is our basic definition so for a Newtonian fluid shear stress once again I am saying is proportional to rate of shear strain okay which comes out to be dv by dl this is rate of shear strain okay or you can write it like this uh, d by dt of d by dt of you can say theta by l uh, not theta by l x by l d by dt of theta or d by dt of x by l that is v by l but that is not a very good definition it would be more precise to write dv by dl so f by a the shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain or it is given by some constant into rate of shear strain this constant is called coefficient of viscosity ok this is this definition is not very precise this is a more precise definition more precise definition now from this relation I can write F equal to eta a dv by dl or if I write it more loosely f equal to eta a v by l now let us see the units of eta what are the units of eta we will look at SI units so force is measured in Newton so Newton and I am trying to find unit of eta area is measured in meter square speed is meters per second by length is in meters so 1 meter I can cancel so the unit of eta will be Newton second per meter square that will be the unit this is the SI unit Newton second per meter square but for some reason the CGS unit has been very popular the CGS unit in CGS centigrade gram second and force is measured in dyne it will be dyne second per centimeter square the CGS unit and this is given a special name 
called poise poise so the cgs unit is called poise p o i s e 1 dyne second per centimeter square is called 1 poise 1 dyne second per centimeter square is called 1 poise so coefficient of viscosity eta is measured in cgs unit in poise p o i s e in honor of a very great scientist called poisuli we'll see uh, something down the line later the poisuli's equation very powerful equation we will see it down the line but this is the unit what is the relation between the si unit and cgs unit let us try to understand si unit is newton second per meter square it has no name so si unit is newton second per meter square it has no special name but we know 1 newton is 10 power 5 dyne 1 second is 1 second only whether you go to cgs or mks and 1 meter is 100 cm but there is a meter square newton second per meter square so 100 cm whole square we have to do which comes out to be 10 dyne second per cm square but dyne second per cm square is called poise so 1 si unit is equal to 10 cgs units that is 10 poise this is the conversion between the cgs unit and the si unit for coefficient of viscosity so coefficient of viscosity is measured in si unit as newton second per meter square or in cgs unit as dyne second per centimeter square or you can call that as poise both these are same dyne second per centimeter square is called poise p o i s e so that is how this uh, coefficient of viscosity is measured so this is one part of our story and this equation is very important for us the viscous force which will be equal to applied force in steady state but may not be equal in general is eta a v by l if you write it very loosely or better dv by dl sometimes you know uh, at least in steady state the velocity gradient is same everywhere velocity decreases linearly with the depth so in that case whether you write v by l or whether you write dv by dl should not matter somebody please mute please keep it in mute i am recording somebody is this is going on record i am telling you please keep all your things on mute who was that who put it on non mute it's a minimum common sense na that you have to put your cells on mute when i ask you to open the videos you don't open it ha huh? but when you want you want to put it on non mute 